Hey guys, today I will be working on Nicole's car. The injectors finally came in the mail, so I'll be installing those today. Another thing I had to do was to compression test the engine. So let's do some testing and see how the car is going to handle. almost ready I mean it's still got a lot of work to do but basically it's almost together that's what the engine is looking like so far it's gonna run some big boost except it's gonna be a little boost because of my injectors for now oh, my engine setup is a uh, s52 99 E36 M3 engine, 3.2 liters, high compression, turbo. I got a GT3582R with a 64 AR T4 exhaust housing and a 44 millimeter wastegate. And then I have a three inch exhaust all the way back. Got OBD1 intake manifold, OBD1 oil filter housing, aluminum um, water neck, 3 inch intercooler piping on the cold side and 2.5 inch on the hot side. So we got the injectors. We're gonna be using Ditchworks 740ccs. These are side feet direct bolt in injectors for the SR20. They also send us a box with the old injectors we had them checked out and one of them is definitely stuck cannot use those so I told them let's go ahead and run another set of injectors just brand new we don't have any issues with it to do this job all I need is literally Phillips screwdriver and a vice grips now I'll show you guys how to remove the stock injectors and install the new Ditchworks injectors be sure to use safety glasses and gloves since you're gonna be dealing with gas that can actually spray in your face or you don't want it in your hands because it will dry out your hands. Trust me, I know. First, we disconnect all the injector plugs. We unscrew the caps, they're Phillips screws. On this, these are already soft, but normally you will have to put a lot of pressure into it so you press against it and then turn it with the other hand. That way you don't strip the, the Phillips um, thingy on the top of the bolt. That way you don't strip the head of the bolt. All right, at this stage, now we're gonna use the vice grip and we're gonna just adjust it so it clamps on the flat part of the injector. Just enough to pull it, but not enough to crush it. Then you want to do like a twist motion and pull out. Now we put these away and we're ready for the new ones. We're gonna use this super loop synthetic grease and we're just gonna loop the o-rings so they sit in properly without actually kinking the o-ring. You don't want that if you kink the o-ring you are gonna just leak fuel all over the place or into the engine like and cause the scenario that we had before with a leaking injector all right so now we're gonna go ahead and apply some of this lube to the o-ring and then it's literally just twist it around so you apply it over the whole o-ring surface Now, you just push it in. Oop, done. Now we repeat the same process with the rest of the O-rings. 
So apply loop on the bottom o-ring and the top o-ring. Then just spread it across the whole o-ring. And press it in. Another cool feature about these injectors is that it actually matches the purple on the engine bay. So now you have purple injectors, purple car, purple valve cover, and gold accents. You're supposed to install these little bushings that come with the kit. They go right in the center of the injector and that's where the cap's gonna press against it. So be sure to install these little things. We got all of our caps back together. Now we just tie them in an even pattern. It's tight. Now we reinstall the plugs. And we're done. That's all it takes to replace injectors on an SR20. Now I'm gonna prime the system and check for leaks. We have pressure and it's not dropping, so that means we have no leaks. Plus, I don't smell any fuel. Our next step is to do a compression test. When the engine hides are locked, you run the chance of bending a rod. So, to check for this, we're gonna do a compression test and check for evenness throughout all the cylinders. If we have a significant drop in pressure from one cylinder to another, then we know something's wrong and we may have bent the rod since the piston will not compress the same distance as the other three pistons. We'll begin by removing the ignition coils. This engine doesn't have the bolts retaining the coils in place, so it makes it a lot easier. Normally you have 10 millimeter bolts holding the coils in place. Then we use a 5.8 spark plug socket with a long extension and remove the spark plug. You will need to remove all four spark plugs so you don't have any load while doing the compression test so the engine can fit, uh, spin freely and get more RPMs to get an accurate reading. Now that we have all of our spark plugs installed, we're gonna install the probe and clip on the gauge last time we were looking at 130 psi I want anything at that or above that number right now on all four cylinders and I'm looking for evenness almost forgot about this one on the SR20 you don't have to disconnect the ignition coils or the spark plugs. I mean, the ignition coils or the injectors. All you need to do is just to disconnect the CAS and then you won't have trigger signals so nothing will happen. We're gonna go ahead and crank the engine with the throttle open all the way. That way allows all the air to flow through the cylinder and get an accurate rating. Huh, so our first cylinder gave us 90 PSI. That's weird. Let's see what the second one does. That one was about 100 PSI. 
Now the one that had me scared was cylinder number three. That's the one that got full with fuel the most. So this is the one that I'm looking towards getting the lowest. If it had been a rod. That one was also about a hundred. Number four was actually a lot lower. So we're looking about 80 PSI right there. That doesn't look too good. I'm gonna go ahead and install everything back together and then I'm gonna heat cycle the car, let it warm up. Then I will get another reading with the engine warm and see if it gets any better. Probably the cylinders might be washed down from all the fuel. So I'm gonna get everything so it gets oil pressure up and I'll see if that makes any difference in compression. Yeah, that's a lot of fuel on this stuff. Look how thin the oil is. Why is there two streams? This makes it so much more difficult now to hold. I like using on all my vehicles bubbling VR1 2050 racing oil. It's the best thing you can put on it. Also, it's the best bang for the money. And you can never go wrong by using this stuff on your engines. This car has an aftermarket oil pan, so it will take five quarts of oil, which I already have laid out over here. Funnel, ain't nobody got time for that. I let the car warm up for a little bit so I can get the rings to seat properly with fresh oil. That way the cylinders are not washed down. And I'm gonna retry the compression test on the car and see if I get better numbers this time. I'm still having about 95 PSI. So I don't know, I kinda don't like this. I'm getting the exact same readings all over again.